Okay, moving on. Um, I wanted to come back and touch a little bit more on this system. This has been what I've been working on the most lately, is my Naomi. Now, the, the Naomi is the arcade counterpart to the Dreamcast. They had a Naomi 1 and a Naomi 2. Um, although 90% of the games are Naomi 1, there's a couple, like the initial Ds, and uh, I think some of the later Tekkens, it was, uh, or, Virtual, or Virtual Fighter 4, I think, actually was on the Naomi 2, but uh, if you have a Naomi 1, you're doing okay. You're not missing a whole lot with the Naomi 2, but uh, I wanted to go over some of the things that I've been working on with it, and I'm going to pull this out just a little bit. Uh, these Z-backs, uh, three Calm and Dynamos, have these uh, great kind of little platform shelves that pull out. The idea is, is that you can mount all your components to it and then have nice quick disconnects in the back and you can pull this whole shelf out with the buttons and the control panel and easily work on it or or swap it out even um, but anyway that aside um, I want to go over just uh, quickly some of the components of the Naomi system uh, if you're gonna put one together of course you're gonna need a Naomi or a Naomi 2 motherboard um, you're gonna need a game or this guy here. This is called the Net Dim. Um, they have two different dim modules. This one has the network. Um, the other dim module does not have the network. The advantages of having the network, if you have the correct setup, you can actually load games onto this from a PC using the network. If you don't have the network version, it's uh, the non-network version is made to hook up to the GD-ROM. And the GD-ROM is a, a type of uh, CD-ROM system. Now, um, getting a GD-ROM for the Naomi can be quite expensive. Um, a lot of them are starting to reach their um, end of life, so they're, you, you find a lot of them that are starting to fail. Uh, so this is just kind of another way to keep the system going. Um, it works really well. I haven't had any problems with it. Um, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, you're going to need a power supply. This is just a cheap Dynex power supply. I don't particularly recommend using a cheap power supply. You should probably use a good power supply. Um, but this one hasn't failed me yet. And it was free because it was just lying around. I did have to make a power supply. Um, the Naomi needs, I think it's a 3.3 volt, which is not common on a, a JAMA power supply. And uh, so I had to make a kind of a AT, uh, ATX harness right here to the Naomi plugs, which are a JST plug. You can find sources for this online. I'm not going to get too much into that. Um, and then you're going to need a JVS to JAMA board or a JVS uh, input board. I chose this one because I got it dirt cheap. Um, I'm not going to get into how much I paid for it, but this one is meant to be uh, hooked up to a JAMA edge connector and then from there it goes via USB to the Naomi and that's the JVS standard. There's about three different versions, three or four different versions of these I.O. boards. Uh, I have the JAMA one here. There's the Rega, uh, regular Sega I.O., which um, is not a bad one to have. It has all the inputs, uh, digital and analog. Um, but it's going to have um, a uh, connector on it, which you're either going to have to solder to or take a ribbon cable and cut it up in order to make it work. Um, I think this one's one of the easier ones. And then there's the Capcom one. Now the Capcom one, um, it will actually power the Naomi and it has a connector on it to power the Naomi off of a regular JAMA power supply. It's okay if you're just using the Naomi, but if you're going to be using the Net Dim or if you're going to be using the GD-ROM attachment, um, they recommend that you get 
some type of either a PC power supply or they do make a power supply for the Naomi um, that has connectors both for the GD-ROM and the Naomi. It's all about uh, uh, current draw and uh, a lot of the times uh, the standard JAMA power supply that you may have in your cabinet even with the Capcom I.O will not be enough to power the whole system or you could run into complications about underdriving your uh, equipment and this equipment setup can be quite expensive to get into if you can rob it out of a, um, a cheaper cabinet that you pick up at auction or something like that it's a great system to have um, a lot of good games so and uh, that's pretty much the gist of it you know you need a power supply Naomi uh, an I.O. card and then either a game or a net dim and a GD-ROM setup. So, um, what I'm going to do is we're going to walk over to the PC um, and I'm going to uh, send a game over and you will see how uh, it loads up. Now, my net dim, there's a battery in here and you're going to find that almost entirely that these are going to be dead. Now there's some write-ups where you can take uh, and rebuild this battery with some rechargeable lithium-ion batteries and uh, what that battery is for is it actually um, keeps the game loaded on the memory in that net dim. So you can actually turn off the system and or reboot the system and the game will come back up. The way I have it now is if I turn off the power to this system I have to reload the game, which doesn't take very long. Um, I do have plans to rebuild that battery, but it certainly doesn't affect its playability. And, um, you know, if you're going to leave it on an hour, uh, you know, a few minutes loading time uh, is not going to be a big bother. So I put my Tekken 3 marquee on there just to cut down some of the glare. It's not in really good shape. It actually. Uh, this had Tekken 3 in it, and the Tekken 3 board, I believe, where did it go? Is it over there? Oh, no, it's in, it's in here. I forgot I plugged it back in just so I could have an image on the screen. Uh, and this screen needs repair, so. Let's take a quick walk over to the computer, and uh, apologize for the mess, but uh, I'll show you the... Uh, how we send a game over there using surprisingly a uh, executable that actually belongs to Sega I believe and uh, uh, Sega had this set up for uh, um, operators where they could actually load a bunch of uh, uh, machines at once off of a network system so um, it's going to be hard because i got to hold the camera and do this. I I'm sorry I don't have a tripod or anything. So, um, What we have here, this is just a simple Windows command prompt. And this folder that I'm in, or directory that I'm in, has uh, some bin files here and dat files, which are uh, basically dumps of the different cartridges or, or uh, GD-ROMs. So, um, I've already gone through, there's plenty of write-ups you can find on uh, the internet. Just look up Naomi Net Booting, or Naomi Net Boot, and uh, you can figure out how to do all of this. Um, uh, so I'm not going to really go into the how-to, I'm just, this is just kind of like a proof of concept here. So, um, we're going to use the program Transfer Game. And the syntax for it is you need to know the, the machine's IP address, uh, which is going to be different uh, to your setup, but in my household, I'm using the 192.168.1 uh, range, and I already know that I have it set to 77. So, And then we're going to load the game file, which uh, let's just go ahead and do Marvel vs. Capcom, because... Uh, um, Everyone knows Marvel vs. Capcom, so that's uh, pretty identifiable. So we're going to do that, and then now it's communicating with the net dim, and it's actually sending that file via the network into the net dim. So I'm going to go back here really quick. Hopefully we get to see the Naomi reboot in time. 
it. So we're back here at the Naomi and you can see it says now loading and the PC is actually sending the uh, DAT file and it's going to put it into this net dim and what's going to happen is after it's done loading it's going to do a soft reboot and then it's going to check the RAM uh, it does kind of like a CRC check on it really quick and then it'll do one more soft boot into the game itself so And you know, there's there's a couple other things you have to have to have this this work. You have to have the right BIOS in the Naomi. Um, you have to have the security pick uh, PIC, uh, which you can get from Summit Arcade. And you can also pick up the BIOS while you're there if you need it. And then you have to ha update your NetDim firmware, which is the same way you would send a game. You just send the new firmware to it. So long as it's, I think you need 3.17 or better. And right now, I think it's running 4.01, which is the current. I think there's a 4.02, but that is kind of a um, homebrew hack to run compact flash cards. You can actually run the games from a compact flash card if you want to be um, totally uh, self-reliant without having to have a PC to load a game on. So. And here's the game. And I am so lucky to have gotten this monitor for absolutely nothing. It cost me a dollar and 15 minutes time of soldering to fix it. It's beautiful. Um, one thing I like to point out too, as now as I hear the sound come up, uh, these cabinets have two grills but they're only populated they only have a speaker in one side and I actually robbed the speaker off of that one for now so I could have stereo sound um, one thing I didn't mention is the Naomi uh, system only outputs down through these RCA jacks so you're going to need some sort of amplification you can use the Naomi soundboard. There's actually a Sega Naomi soundboard. But in order to use that, you're also going to have to have the, the matching transformer to run that soundboard. And uh, what I'm going to show you here, uh, let's see where it is at. And everything here is just off the cuff, unedited. So I apologize for the shaky camera. I'm not, I, I haven't gone through much prep, so I'm just doing this as it comes so what I have here is a uh, it's one of these Chinese amplifiers that you can find on eBay now some people are very skeptical of these Chinese electronics um, I'll have you know that I have plenty of Chinese electronics and if you do your research, there are some good things to be had out there. I have some Chinese-made car stereo, you know, those um, DVD in-car stereo systems, uh, and I really like them, and uh, I get a lot of people asking me about them since I have, I think I have them in three cars now, and um, I actually find the quality to be quite good, and the features really can't be beat for the price. but. That aside, this is um, you know one of those Chinese uh, little mini amplifiers. It runs off 12 volts. I think it needs about two amps. It's got RCA input as well as um, a what is that called? A eighth inch uh, RCA or eighth inch phono jack. It, it, you know headphone jack basically uh, as an input. You know they call it MP3, but it's basically just the same thing and and. I used it because that's what I happened to have a cable for at the time. But you could just as uh, easily go RCA straight to RCA. Um, I went RCA to this phono jack, which is what I had a cable for. And these are my speaker connections. These are 8 ohm speakers. Um, you can drive 4 and 8 ohm with this little guy. I paid less than 20 bucks, let's put it that way. Shipped. Less than 20 bucks. And this thing um, is nice and simple. You got volume, bass, treble. You have a uh, cutout here, like if you just want it to be 
natural, you know, how it comes from the Naomi. You can hit direct, or you can, you know, add a little bass or treble and, uh, you know, modify the waveform a little bit. And it's got plenty of power, like, um, let's give that, what is that there, maybe about a two, two to three. And that's plenty uh, for this game um, to hear everything and have a good, rich uh, sound experience. But it's got a lot, and I mean a lot, of headroom. So not a bad choice. In fact, I'm probably going to buy another one of these to run stereo sound on my, uh, my CPS-2 board uh, for the Q sound. So um, I'll use this to uh, from the RCA jacks out uh, to drive stereo sound so I can have Q sound and stereo sound. So just thought I'd show you all of that. Um, I'm just about ready to, um, uh, with all the electronics of this, to button it up and start making it look good. So um, th that's also why I bought this control panel. I got this... Uh, I think it's new old stock. Um, it looks like it was for doing conversions and stuff. It's got an awful lot of buttonhole, so um, I'm probably going to set it up in a typical Capcom six button setup. Um, and what I thought about doing was actually doing lighted buttons for a change. Um, you know, just to give it some character and some flair. And one of the things I can do with the lighted buttons is say if I'm running a game here that only needs two or maybe three buttons well all I have to do is just plug in just those two or three buttons that the game requires and it makes it very quick for the user or the uh, the player to come up and identify which buttons actually do something in the game because um, I get that a lot especially you know with the main cabinet um, you know the, the younger crowd they're like like which buttons do what, or you know, or, or, or you know, they're pushing all the buttons. I have to, you know, oh, you only need to push these two, you know. So I thought I'd try that out, you know. But um, this is one of my, this is the one I'm kind of proud of. Um, it's it's uh, something I've been wanting to try out ever since I heard of what the Naomi Two is, because I'm a big uh, Dreamcast fan. Um, you know, I bought the Dreamcast when a lot of people were buying PlayStations. Um, and I really love uh, SNK games, and uh, this is where you will find um, SNK versus Capcom and SNK versus Capcom 2. Um, they had a short, uh, a short stint on the Atomus Wave uh, before uh, SNK... Playmore uh, moved on to uh, building the games on the Naomi. Now, they actually weren't made by SNK Playmore. Uh, I believe Capcom was responsible for making a lot of it, but at least the franchise uh, names, you know, like uh, SNK versus Capcom or Capcom versus SNK, uh, you know, this is where they ended up was on the Naomi. So, and uh, you could actually, I'd like to say it's the Taito X2 platform, which is like a PC platform, uh, you can find a couple more of uh, SNK's uh, franchises on, like uh, the King of Fighters and stuff, and uh, it looks really good on that uh, PC platform. So, A Type X, though, is very big money. We're talking, probably to get a complete Type X set up, you're looking at a grand, um, just because it, it's current and it's also sought after because that's where you'll find the uh, Street Fighter 4 arcade mode on. So, anyway, um, I'm going to wrap up that and move on to the next. Thank you for watching.